Greetings, aspiring sterile processing technicians. Today, I'd like to try something interesting with you, and we're going to keep this up as much as possible. Uh, and we're going to take into account everything that this uh, can provide for us. This is to help you uh, analyze the sterile processing exam, CRCST exam questions, and be able to competently answer them. Now, a few rules of the game. I'd like you to do this as follows. Since this is a recording, I want you to use your pen or paper uh, or uh, whatever word processor you have, Microsoft Word, Google Docs, you know, whatever the whatever you use. And I would like you to transcribe my questions and the answers and the rationale behind the answer. OK, so let's get started. This is going to. Yes, it's a lengthy process and everything, but it will give you an opportunity to not just listen and hear the questions. It'll give you an opportunity to transcribe them and by doing so, memorize them and internalize them permanently. So and then when you re listen to them, you can also look at your uh, be it scribbles or retyped uh, documents and say, aha, yeah, I know this. All right, so let's do this. See how it goes. And once I post it, I'm going to be looking for your feedback to let me know. Was it helpful or not? So let's make it work. Question number one, water soluble lubricants designed for surgical instruments were originally designed as which of the following? Number one, rust inhibitors for drills. Number two, maintain the integrity of the instrument. Number three, to prolong the life of the instrument. And number four, to prevent abrasion on blades. Once again, water soluble lubricants designed for surgical instruments were originally designed as which of the following? One, rust inhibitors for drills. Two, maintain the integrity of, of instruments. Three, prolong the life of instruments and four, prevent the abrasion on blades. The correct answer here is number one, rust inhibitors for drills. Water soluble lubricants designed for surgical instruments were originally developed as rust inhibitors for carbon steel dental drills and were used to pre-coat them prior to sterilization. Today, lubricants are an important part of instrument maintenance program because they maintain the integrity of instruments and keep them in good working orders. Please try to find this information in the sterile processing manual. OK, you can find the page where it's written and move forward from that. OK, I hope this question and answer made sense. Let's go to the next one. Next question. Ideally, which of the following should be utilized as the free rinsing agent to minimize the deposit of minerals that appear as water spots when dry? Let me read this again. Ideally, which of the following should be utilized as the free rinsing agent to minimize deposits of minerals that appear as water spots when they dry? Option number one, distilled water. Option two, cold water. Option three, lukewarm water. And number four, deionized water. Okay, the answer here is deionized water. Ideally, deionized water should be utilized as the free rinsing agent to minimize the deposit of minerals that appear as water spots when dry. Free rinsing refers to the removal of any residue of cleaning agents and chemicals remaining after the cleaning process and is necessary regardless of whether a manual or automated cleaning process is used. Remember, deionized water is also called critical water. Hopefully that made sense. Let's go to the next question. OK, what is the best way to ensure getting the best results with the correct cleaning method? One more time. What is the best way to ensure getting the best results with the correct cleaning method? Option number one, consulting OSHA's website. 
Option two, consulting the department's standard precautions. Option three, consulting the instrument manufacturer's written instructions. Option four, consulting CDC website. Ooh, I love this question because it contains my favorite answer, which is consulting the instrument manufacturer's written instructions, or OEMIFU. Let's listen to the rationale. Instruments delivered to the decontamination area should be cleaned either manually with the use of automated washers or combination of both. Instrument manufacturers are responsible for providing the written instructions. For the decontamination of instruments, as well as the test results verifying the instruments can be effectively decontaminated, decontaminated without posing any harm. Some fabulous rationale, but I want to tell you that overall, every time when you see a question like this or an answer like that on the exam that says consult OEM IFU, it is almost 100% guarantee that that is a correct answer. Next question. Enzyme products are commonly used to clean heavily soiled items. Amylase enzymes catalyze which of the following? Number one, starch. Number two, fatty deposits. Number three, blood. Number four, mucus. Hmm. Let me repeat this one more time. Enzyme products are commonly used to clean heavily soiled items. Amylase enzymes catalyze which of the following? Number one, starch. Number two, fatty deposits. Number three, blood. Number four, mucus. Rationale here, the answer here is starch. Amylase catalyzes starches. You remember, protease for proteins, lipase for fats, and amylase is for starches uh, or for carbohydrates. So that's the rationale behind this. And the answer here is number one. Very important for you to remember all three enzymes used in detergents. Next question. Here we go. If there is a possibility that a medical device will cause a temporary or reversible health problem, this is considered which class of FDA product recall? Oh, very important questions. Let re let's read it one more time and concentrate on each and every word. If there is a possibility that a medical device will cause a temporary or reversible health problem. This is considered which class of FDA product recall? Hmm. Okay, so first option, voluntary. Second option, class one. Third option, class two. Fourth option, class three. Remember, they are asking about a recall. Okay. And remember, they're asking about a temporary or reversible health problem. So the answer here is class two recall. Remember, you know, class one recall, that's immediate, something that may cause permanent damage or most likely to cause permanent damage uh, or uh, um, death. So for that, that's a class three device. So class three device requires a class one recall. But this one says, temporary or reversible health problem. So the answer here is number three, class two device. A class two recall indicates less serious risk. There is a possibility that the product will cause a temporary or reversible health problem, or there is a remote chance the device will cause serious health problems. The manufacturer must notify customers and sometimes asks them to inform the product's recipients. Well, hopefully that made sense. It made sense to me. Remember, always a good idea to go back to the book, to the chapter of the book, to find the right answers. The combination of writing, typing, repeating, listening, and of course, looking through the book helps for you to permanently internalize and retain the information. Now, these are just sample questions that I found here and there. So, you know, but they do appear just like that on the exam. Okay. Next question, the removal of any residue of cleaning agents and chemicals remaining after the cleaning process is known as. Let's read it one more time. The removal of any residue of cleaning agents and chemicals remaining after the cleaning process is known as. Number one, 
final rinsing. Number two, residual rinsing. Number three, free rinsing. Number four, double rinsing. Mm. Let's see. Well, I've never heard of residual rinsing, so we're going to brush that off. I've never heard of double rinsing. I've only heard of two things, final rinsing and free rinsing. My guess, educated guess, goes with free rinsing, okay? Uh, because the final residue removal usually pertains to detergents and they should be free rinsing. This is the language used in that. And the correct answer here is number three, free rinsing. Free rinsing ref refers to the removal of any res residue of cleaning agents and chemicals remaining after the cleaning process and is necessary regardless of whether a manual or automated cleaning process is used. Residual cleaning chemicals affect instrument performance, pose risk of infection, and have corrosive effects on the finish of instruments. Hopefully this answer and the question made sense. Let's go to the next question. Next question, only detergents that have been specially formulated for use in ultrasonic cleaners should be used in them. They must be all the following except, let's read the question one more time carefully. Only detergents that have been specially formulated for use in ultrasonic cleaners should be used in them. They must be all of the following except, okay, so all detergents must have the same qualities. Let's go. Question uh, answer num. Formulated with surfactants. Well, guess what? All detergents ha must have surfactants. They must be low foaming. That's option number two. Number three, formulating uh, with chelating agents to prevent a redeposit of soil. We know that to be true. And last number four, allow for slow controlled soil removal. I've never heard about that. So the answer here is four. Allow for slow controlled soil removal. So all of the previous ones were true, except this one. Detergents don't have to allow for slow controlled soil removal. Detergents must be for, uh, you know, must have surfactants, chelating agents, uh, uh, deflocculating agents, uh, all of those, uh, you know, sequestering agents, all those wonderful things. And of course, they must be uh, low foaming and free rinsing. So this is the correct answer. Number four, allow for slow controlled soil removal is not included in what detergents ought to be and that's it all right hopefully this answer made sense let's move forward to the next question okay here we go acids turn litmus paper what color acids turn litmus paper what color number one option blue number two yellow Number three, purple. Number four, red. The answer here is number four, it is red. pH is used to measure acidity or alkalinity. Acids turn litmus paper red. Alkalines, sometimes called bases, turn litmus paper blue. Worthwhile information to remember. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Phenolics. Phenolics are recommended for use in the decontamination area for disinfection of which of the following? Number one, oh, let me read the question one more time. Phenolics are recommended for use in the decontamination area for disinfection of which of the following? Number one, rubber. Number two, hard surfaces. Number three, thermometers. Number four, ear specula. The answer here is number two, hard surfaces. Phenolics are recommended for use in the decontamination area for disinfection of hard surfaces. Copious rinsing is required to eliminate the potential for skin burns. The main usage of phenolics is in housekeeping for walls, floors, countertops, and furnishings. And there's a reason for that. The phenolics used to be very popular, but they're no longer that way because they leave a residue which becomes reactivated when moistened. That's why all these surfaces can be cleaned with phenolics because next time you get them wet, they begin to work again. And just remember that phenolics, like anything else, become uh, deactivated. Their strength diminishes if there, is, if there are chunks of a uh, bio burden left 
on the surfaces that you're cleaning. So if you didn't pre-clean stuff using regular, uh, you know, cleaning techniques to remove gross visible and invisible soil, uh, phenolics are not going to do a very good job on any of this. Okay, hopefully this made sense. Let's go to the next question. All right, next question is, which of the following would be categorized as a semi-critical item in terms of disinfection? One more time, which of the following would be categorized as a semi-critical item in terms of disinfection? Number one, endotracheal tube. Number two, blood pressure cuffs. Number three, cardiac catheters. Number four, surgical instruments. Ooh. So they're asking us, which of the following would be categorized as a semi-critical item? Now, semi-critical items come in contact with intact mucous membrane. Now, we had several items here, endotracheal tubes, blood pressure cuffs, cardiac catheters, and surgical instruments. Surgical instruments come in contact with flowing blood. Cardiac catheters are embedded into flowing blood, whether it's blood vessels or uh, in the heart, etc. So flowing blood must be sterile. Surgical instruments must be sterile. Blood pressure cuff comes in contact with intact skin. So semi-critical items come in contact with intact mucous membrane. In this particular place, the only one is option one, which is endotracheal tube. Endotracheal tube is the one that goes inside the trachea, okay? which is the breathing tube that they use for surgery. And that is a semi-critical item. Hopefully that made sense. The answer here was number one, endotracheal tube. And last question for this episode. Enzymes are specific in their action. A protein enzyme will, will, recognize, uh, will recognize which of the following. One, one that has undergone a chemical reaction. Two, proteins in their natural state. Three, fat molecules. Four, chemically altered protein. So enzymes are specific in their action. A protein enzyme will recognize which of the following. One, number one is one that has undergone a chemical reaction. That seems like a bogus answer. Number two, proteins in their natural state. Okay, so a protein enzyme will recognize a protein. So this is a possibility. Next, the answer is fat molecules, which is number three. Well, protein enzyme doesn't recognize fat at all. And chemically altered protein doesn't sound right in comparison to number two, which is protein in the natural state. This is the right answer. Answer number two. Okay, I'm gonna stop with this. I'm gonna post this. And your job is to hit the like or dislike button and send me text letting me know if this was helpful to you. And I will post more in the same style. Please let me know. Now, remember, I'm asking these questions randomly. You need to listen, write, and understand and find the answer in the book. Depending on your response, will determine whether I will do more of these videos. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you all very much for being here.